Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Augustus the Animator and today I'm going to be teaching you how to do some cool 3D movement with some 2D layers like this little movie. Alright, hopefully you're a Lady Gaga fan. If you're not, you're just missing out. Um, so that's what we'll be doing, this cute little bobbing head in that particular kind of motion. Okay, so um, I am not going to go through the part where I make all of these shapes because they're literally as straightforward as they look. They are just shapes in these, it's just really easy forms. All I tried to do was do Lady Gaga from the look from Beautiful Dirty Rich, which I'm sure you know, um, in the simplest way that I could. So all it is is, let me just go through, just her hood, then her face, then her hair, and then her sunglasses. And that's all it is. And I'm not going to go through how I made that. All I did was click with the pen tool and make these shapes. And so we're just going to give ourselves a little head start with that. And I made this medium blue solid background. And that's it. All right. We are just going to start by making, well, we're going to put the song into the composition. Beautiful Dirty Rich, it's a good one, classic Gaga. And we are going to right click on that, do keyframe assistant and do convert audio to keyframes. And so now, oh, it doesn't my work for area, okay. So if we click down, click on this again, click waveform where we can actually see this, these spikes are going to be converted into keyframes. So if I click on audio amplitude, hit U to bring down the keyframes, zoom in a little, every single frame, there's um, a keyframe that was made that's associated with the volume of this song. So it's going to be low, 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 and then high is what these are going to look like. And that is really important because we're going to use those, use those to animate um, a camera essentially. So I am going to, since I think these are all the same, I'm not an audio person really, I'm going to delete the left and right channel, I think. You know, I could be wrong about that, but we just need one channel to work with this animation. So we're just going to do that to start. We have our audio in the form of keyframes now. So I'm going to twirl this up, leave that down, and I am going to make a new layer, new camera. And everything with that is fine for what we're doing. I'm just going to hit OK. Uh, great. All right. And I think the little message box that was just up there says that cameras don't affect, or 2D layers don't affect the camera. So these are all 2D right now. So even if I move the camera around, hit P for position, a bunch. Let's see, this is actually, yeah, it's not gonna do anything because these are 2D layers and the camera is not gonna affect them at all. These are just gonna stay put where they are. Uh, so what I need to do, Click on all of these layers, just my hair, sunglasses, face, and hood, and click the little 3D box to make them 3D layers. And so what that does is add another dimension to our position. It does other things too, but I'm going to hit position on all these, and it adds the Z dimension, which is going to be our depth. So what I need to do is space these out a little bit. Um, to have the sunglasses be in front of everything in space, then the hair, below that the face, and below that and back the hood. So, I'm gonna, with my Z value, I'm going to make that go a little bit farther back in space. With the face, which is next, I'm going to go maybe between halfway, zero, halfway between zero and 88, so like, whatever, 42. I can maybe leave the hair there, and then the sunglasses I'll bring forward in space a little bit. And as you can see, that messes with the scale of things, because when it's closer to camera, of course, it's going to appear bigger, just like it would with like a real camera. Okay, so now that I've done that, um, now when I move the camera, I think, yeah, woo! So I move the camera, and not only do... Um, I mean, the layers like move in general, which is because they're 3D. But as you can see, like there's some depth to it, which is super cool. So even this is like a really cool look. Um, 
it looks very 3D, even though these are just super basic 2D flat vectors. So that is even like, I'm like actually really into that look. But for this tutorial, we're just doing like a vertical type thing. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we have our position for our camera. Um, I'm gonna separate these dimensions. So the X, Y, and Z dimensions are all gonna be separate. Because all I really want to mess with is the Y position for this. So I'm going to alt click on the keyframe button to bring down my expressions panel and we're going to do a little bit of coding, but it's going to be fine. So I think you need to make a keyframe first. Yeah, then I'll click. Then it won't go away when I get rid of this. Okay, so I just want the Y value of this to be equal to the volume level. So whenever the volume moves and spikes, the camera will move and spike as well. So, what I need to do, I need to click on this guy, bring up my effect controls, so that I can see this slider here, because the slider is associated with the volume. So again, it's like low, 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 with these volumes up here, or these levels here, and when she starts singing, and the beat drops and all that, it gets higher, the volume level. Which is great, because that's what we want. So. I'm going to pick whip the Y position here to this slider. So now, so you can see that that did something. Um, so now the Y position of this camera is equal to the volume level of the song, which is like super cool. So now you can see it move a little bit, which is super cool, but it's not quite what we want yet. So I need to, so this whole thing is just one value. This whole thing is like the volume level of the song. So I'm going to put parentheses around that and just have that exist as its own thing. And then what I'm going to do is, I wonder if I can actually just adjust this Y position. No, I absolutely cannot because I made it equal to the volume level, which is just fine. I'm going to get rid of that keyframe. So since this value is pretty small, because it used to be at like 540 or something, and so now our camera look is really weird and it's really high, so I need to add to this value something like 500. Oops. So I'm going to hit plus 500 and just see what that does. Right. So now it put it back to like that original spot because this is around, these values are around like you know, between like 5 and 30, which in terms of this like 1080 square is not that much, so I need to get, need to get the camera back to something um, near the center. So that's good, so now it doesn't look quite as distorted. And if we hit play again, we can still see it moving, but I think that's like a little bit too subtle. So what we're gonna do is, we're actually gonna do, we're gonna multiply this value so that when this volume spikes it's going to be exaggerated even more in these movements. So I'm going to hit the multiply button and we'll just do like times five just see how that looks. And it looks like yeah so now there's more movement because it's this value multiplied by five and then we add 500 because that's like order of operations or whatever. The PEMDAS from when you were in like middle school it's coming back. Okay. So yeah, I think that looks like not too bad. Another way you can adjust these is if I just take all of these layers and then adjust the Y value of them, you can, or really I could just do any value. It'll change the angle at which the camera views it. So this is like kind of, it's been smushed down a little bit because the camera's up higher. Um, I can move it up here to, oops, oh, come on now, and then if we play, you can see it's a different look, because they're at a different angle to the camera. Great, I'm going to put them all back at 540, I think is the center of this, well it absolutely is not 960, because this is a square. Oh man, select all of them, put them at 960, 
great. See how that looks again. And yeah, you can definitely fiddle with this. I'm actually going to... Ooh, so when I adjusted that, I changed all of these Z values, which is absolutely not what I wanted to do. Ooh, that does not look cute. So I'm going to change these again so they're layered, because they currently are not, because of when I was fiddling around with stuff. So the greater the distance between these and the Z space, the Z value, like the depth of it, the more movement you'll get between each layer. So I actually might just really exaggerate these guys. And so that looks like super weird now, but you know what, it's fine. And you get like that movement, it's a lot clearer. So depending on what you want to do, that might be like the amount of movement that you want. And if I just like move this x value, like that's kind of cool. Like it looks 3D even though it's basic vectors, so simple to do. If I can do them, you can do them. So that's basically the tutorial. All you need to know how to do is right click on your music, do the convert either to keyframes, and then you'll use the sliders created from that in your expressions for your Y position. So that's basically it. And I hope you learned something. If I breezed over that too fast or I missed something or something's confusing, please let me know. Leave a comment. I'd be very happy to answer. Um, give me a like, give me a subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.